Let's talk about partitioning and storage structure. Partitions are a really important topic for a Cassandra data model. Not only do they give you some indication of where your data is in your data model, they also give you an indication of where your data is in the cluster. So we're gonna go through some of these topics in depth. So the partitions, partition keys, composite partition keys, these are all really like the same topic, but really somewhat different. And we need to get into each one of these so you can be successful building a Cassandra data model. This is one of those things that you really just need to know because if you don't get it right, you're gonna have to fix it eventually. So let's do it right the first time. Let's go back a little bit to your days of relational data modeling. This should look familiar. This is a relational query. So if you're coming from a relational database, these queries like title equals, added data is less than, those are totally cool. You can do that. You can query on any column inside a relational data model. However, if you look at the output, if you run this in a Cassandra database, well, look what happens. It starts throwing errors. Why is that? Now, this is one of the things that really upsets people when they first start using Cassandra is, I created a table, I can't just query anything I want. What gives? Well, there's a reason for this. And once I explain, I think you'll see the power in it as well. It is different, it does look the same, but the power is in the difference. Let's start with a really simple table. This is from our killer video example. It's storing the videos and has a very simple structure so we can walk through it. So this should look familiar if you come from a relational database where you have this create table. Here's the name of the table, some columns with some types and a primary key designation. Now, if we were to look at that table graphically, you could see that below, you see everything's normally just arranged in rows, columns. This should look familiar to you. So this table, we're gonna break down and look into the different parts. The big difference here is in the storage and what that table does to the storage engine. Now, I know this seems like it's really getting into the weeds, but it does make sense. And this is important for you to understand just at a concept level of why the data is being stored like this and how it affects your data model down the road. The big deal here, and again, this is the thing you need to understand. You're building data models to query the data. So when you build that data model, you're expecting it to come off the disk really fast. If you look at the structure on this graphic, you can see all the different parts. There are partitions, which is each one of the rows in this graphic. The partition key is that one, two, or three. And inside each partition, we're gonna have rows and columns. The columns are stored locally as what's called cells on the disk. And this is a grouping. Think about this as a way to logically group data together so it can be physically grouped together on disk. So when we go to access that, we can find it quickly. The representation of that data stored in the storage engine is translated into a CQL table. And this is what we see when we use it programmatically. When we select data from the table, we see it in rows and columns, just like we expect, just like we can use in our application. Determining the partition key is a pretty critical step. However, knowing where to find it is also a big deal. If you look at this diagram, we have primary key designation of ID. There's just one item in the primary key. The partition key is always the first value in the primary key. Every other value is what's considered the clustering column, and those are covered in a different module. So we're just gonna focus on that partition key. And that partition key is that very first item, like I said, and that's how we get some really interesting information about where the data is in the cluster. Take a look at this diagram. Now, if you were just to leave the where clause out, say, select star from video, where is that data? And that's really the critical part of a Cassandra data model because it could be anywhere. If you have a massive cluster, a thousand node cluster, where's that data? Well, the partition key says, here is where I'm gonna store the data. If you go back to how data is stored in a Cassandra cluster, you'll recall that that primary key partition key, so that partition key itself is hashed and then used for placement. These are concepts like the snitch and how data is placed inside of your cluster. So that concept from there, this is where it really takes root. If you wanna find your data, you need to provide a partition key because that will put it on a specific node. If you're not using a partition key inside of your where clause, then you're opening up the door for a huge full cluster scan, which is a really, really inefficient way to find data and is definitely not the right data model. So how do you do it without incurring all that cost? I'm glad you asked. Take a look at this. Here we're selecting from videos where we provide a partition key. ID equals two. 
That ID equals two says, all right, based on the fact that I'm using a consistent hashing algorithm, I can find my data somewhere in my cluster and it'll always be there, that consistent part. So that ID equals two, that two is hashed, that hash number leads to a certain node because if you remember each node stores a range of data. Well, when I say ID equals two, it goes to node two. That's where the data is stored and it's replicas of course. But now I don't have to go look at the entire cluster to find my data. I can go to one node. This is where the speed and efficiency of a really good data model comes out. When you start using a partition key properly, along with clustering columns, which you're gonna learn about, those two things together will make your data model fast. You're gonna get really fast access on read. Let's look at the ways you can construct a primary key using a partition key. The first is the simple. Simple is just that, it's one key. So if you look at this diagram, you'll see that the primary key in this case is a UUID. Going back to our types, UUID is a really good choice for a primary key because it is guaranteed to be unique. But that simple primary key means that you just have one value, nothing else. There's no clustering columns, anything else. So in the case of the video table that we're using as an example, ID is the only thing in the primary key. Composite partition keys are whenever you need to combine two values together to make one single partition key. Could be a little dicey concept if you're not paying attention to one thing. If you look at the way that the primary key is written here, there's name and year, but they're contained inside of a parenthesis or bracket. And that means we're combining these two things together. Now, if you recall when I said primary key, the very first value is the partition key. If you put the parentheses around it, then that is contained as one value. So those two things, name and year, if you look at the diagram, insurgent 2015, those two things are considered the partition key. So those two columns are combined together and used for placement in the cluster. Can be very, very good for speed and efficiency when you know that those two things are always gonna be glued together. Again, more options, you can include more than one value. It doesn't have to be two, it could be three or four, many values. Just know that all those values you add in your partition key, you're gonna to have to use those every time you use a where clause. So if you add three items, you're gonna to have to provide three items. So think ahead before you put those in the partition key. So let's wrap it up. I know we have a lot of terminology flying around here, but you're keeping up, good job. Primary key, partition key, those are different. So I don't wanna sound like this is a cliche, but these are the keys, literally. And the primary key, partition key, understanding the differences are really important. A primary key is this big thing. Partition key is included inside of the primary key. So that partition key from a Cassandra data model, that's placement. Where in the cluster is my data? And then primary key, that says everything inside of this primary key designation, all of those columns that I included in here, make this record unique. So primary key for uniqueness, partition key for placement. That's what you need to know. Can they be the same thing? Sure but not always, and there are a lot of different options. This is why you're taking this course, that you wanna understand all the options for your data model, for your use case. But you are learning the most important parts of a data model. You master these, you will be a master at Cassandra Data Modeling. Now let's try an exercise about what you just learned, doing some basic CQL and learning about primary keys.